I always look forward to an ASUS monitor review, especially when it comes to OLED. ASUS kind of came out of the first wave of OLED game monitors as this unofficial champ, not only with its excellent PG42UQ, but also the searing brightness of the PG27AQDM. Now we're looking at the second wave of OLED from ASUS, starting with the PG32UCDM. This one is really interesting too, as it's the first QD OLED monitor and the first 32-inch 4K OLED display from ASUS. I can tell you right now that it's gorgeous, and it's packed with features that justify its higher than average price. It's still early for 2024 OLED game monitors, but ASUS may already have claimed the top slot. But before getting into the rest of the review, make sure to get subscribed below so you don't miss any new videos from Digital Trends. All right, so the PG32 UCDM is ASUS's first QD OLED gaming monitor. It's using the same Samsung display panel that we saw on the Alienware 32 QD OLED. Make sure to check out our video review of that monitor, which means this display is 32 inches, 4K, and comes with a 240 hertz refresh rate. The specs are basically what you'd expect for an OLED display. ASUS claims peak brightness of 1000 nits in HDR, 450 nits in SDR, and 250 nits for the full screen in HDR. You also get a 0.03 millisecond gray to gray response time, a contrast ratio of 1.5 million to one, technically infinite to one due to the fact that it's OLED, but that doesn't matter. Adaptive sync support and support for both HDR10 and Dolby Vision. It's an impressive list of specs, but they aren't really new. It's exactly what we saw on the Alienware display earlier this year, and ASUS has a lot more to prove. The PG32 UCDM comes in at $1,300, while Alienware's monitor is just $1,200. The kind of reigning question of this review is, how does ASUS justify charging $100 more than what you can get with the Alienware? And most obviously, that comes in features. ASUS packs a ton of extra goodies into its monitors, and they provide a lot of value. For instance, there's a quarter inch thread on the top of the stand so you can mount a tripod head in a camera. There's a built-in KVM switch so you can use your peripherals across multiple sources. You can adjust your picture settings on the desktop through ASUS Display Widget Center. And there's an integrated USB hub with three USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A ports and a USB-C port capable of 90 watts of power delivery. Any of these features on their own really wouldn't need much, but add them together and yeah, ASUS packs a ton of value into this display. You can get the same panel elsewhere, but ASUS really does go above and beyond to make its version of this monitor stand out from an increasingly crowded market. The big deal here for the PG32 UCDM is that it's covered by ASUS's new warranty. Just like Alienware, Corsair, and now MSI, ASUS is offering a three-year warranty on its OLED monitors that covers burn-in. A three-year warranty has been a feather in Alienware's cap for the past couple of years, and now ASUS is finally matching it. Outside of the features, there's also the design, which is admittedly awesome, but it may not be for everyone. So just like most ROG monitors, you get this massive tri-point stand on the PG32 UCDM. It's big, but the stand doesn't protrude too far out in front of the monitor. The display itself is centered a little closer to the front of the stand, so it doesn't feel like you're wasting too much desk space. Don't get me wrong, this monitor still takes up a decent chunk of desk space with the included stand, but at least you aren't dealing with, you know, several inches of stand before you get to the actual screen. The included stand features solid adjustment points, including 25 degrees of tilt, 30 degrees of swivel, and just shy of four and a half inches of height adjustment. Unfortunately, there's no pivot here with the included stand. As you probably guessed, you don't have to use the included stand, as ASUS includes a 100mm by 100mm vase amount through this hefty adapter included in the box. You might want to keep the included stand though, as ASUS uses the bit of extra height to provide a cast down ROG logo through the bottom of it. This isn't a new feature, but man, it still looks super cool. Elsewhere, you'll find RGB on the back of the stand where the monitor connects and on the large ROG logo, which you can control through the on-screen display. It's not bright enough to provide great bias lighting and you won't see it during use, but yeah, it still looks awesome. Looks are one thing, but performance is another. The PG32 UCDM is quite a bit thicker than last year's PG27 AQDM, mainly due to this chunky plastic shell on the back of the display. This houses a custom heatsink that allows the monitor to be cooled without fans. It's 
totally passive here. You don't need to contend with any noise, and in my testing, the monitor really never even reached the point of being warm, at least not to a concerning level. Under the display, you'll find the connections. As mentioned, there's an integrated USB hub with three USB-A ports and a single USB-C port, along with two HDMI 2.1 connections and a single DisplayPort 1.4 port. You can use Display Widget Center to control the monitor on your desktop, but the OSD is excellent. There's this little lip on the front of the monitor and you'll find a joystick behind it so there's no hunting around behind the display. In the OSD, you have a ton of options between different picture modes, six axis color adjustment, and settings for adaptive sync, but I wanna highlight two settings in particular. First, in HDR, ASUS allows you to control the brightness. This will change the color response, but most monitors lock you out of brightness adjustment when you turn on HDR. Here, that's at least an option if you want it. More important is the Extreme Low Motion Blur, or ELMB. You may know this as Black Frame Insertion, or BFI, which improves motion clarity if your frame rate is low. It works here, but it has a few caveats. You can't be in HDR or use variable refresh rate, and you have to set the monitor to 120 hertz. That's 120 hertz specifically, not you know, below that level. So where is this relevant? Well, if you're running a game and can't hit 120 hertz, you can cap your frame rate at 60 FPS and with ELMB, get the motion clarity of 120 hertz. To be clear, you don't get the smoothness of a game running at 120 FPS, it still feels like 60 FPS, but there's a lot less blur with ELMB turned on. It's a great feature to have, particularly with console games that will stay locked at 60 FPS, but I can imagine most people will pair this high-end monitor with a high-end PC, and in that situation, you should just run the monitor at its full refresh rate. Turning on ELMB not only locks you out of HDR, but it also disables adaptive sync and massively lowers the brightness of the display. All right, let's talk image quality. We've seen this panel before and we know what to expect. It's third gen QD OLED fit with great brightness, perfect contrast, and solid color accuracy. And ASUS gives you a lot of options to tweak your picture quality. But there is one setting missing from the display that I really wish was included. So starting off, you have great color coverage here. In the user mode, I measured 100% of sRGB, 98% of DCI-P3, and 93% of Adobe RGB. That Adobe RGB result is particularly impressive, showing great color coverage on this display. In the user mode with all the settings returned to default, however, color accuracy wasn't great. I measured an error of three in SDR out of the box. You can get this monitor in a much better spot though. In the sRGB mode, the color error was just over one, and with the color options built into the display, there's definitely room to adjust the color more. This isn't the best accuracy I've seen out of the box, but it's certainly not bad either. But let's get on to the metric everyone cares about with OLED, brightness. In SDR, I measured a peak brightness of 436 nits, which is just a stone's throw away from that 450 nits ASUS claims. HDR is really what matters here, and I was just a little disappointed. ASUS claims a peak brightness of 1000 nits, and I know this panel can reach it, but I wasn't able to get there with the picture presets that are included with this display. There are four HDR modes included with the monitor, and the console HDR setting allowed me to hit just over 800 nits for a 4% window. That was the highest result I was able to record though. Don't get me wrong, this is a super bright monitor and it looks even brighter considering you have you know, perfect black levels on OLED. You won't have any problems working off of it in a brightly lit room with the highest brightness setting feeling totally searing. In a dark environment, I wasn't even comfortable pushing the brightness above halfway. Still, we're a little short of a thousand nits, at least with the HDR presets. Regardless, this monitor is still super bright and it looks fantastic. For brightly lit rooms, the bigger element to overcome is the glossy coating, not the brightness of the display. It looks like ASUS is using some sort of coating to keep the reflections at bay, but any harsh direct light still shows up pretty clearly. The main reason you'll buy this monitor though is gaming. There are all the things here. You get a 240Hz refresh rate, FreeSync Premium Pro and G-Sync compatible support, support for HDR10 and Dolby Vision for consoles, and of course the insane response times of OLED. You know you're going to get a great gaming experience here, and for me, it's all about that experience. It's high refresh rate and it's OLED and great HDR, but this form factor is what really shines. There's something so perfect about a 4K monitor at 32 inches where you're getting this sweet spot of pixel density at around 140 pixels per inch. The monitor looks super sharp, but it's also big enough that you really feel immersed in games. 
With the default stand, it fills your view. You're not sucked in quite as much as some massive monitor like the Odyssey OLED G8, but the display is still large enough to immerse you in those cinematic titles like Alan Wake 2 and Cyberpunk 2077. You're getting the best of both worlds here too. A 240 hertz refresh rate with the low response times of OLED can make a big difference in motion clarity for those you know, more competitive games like Counter-Strike 2 and Rainbow Six Siege. You get both here, and you don't have to wrangle with some weird aspect ratio like you can run into with other OLED gaming monitors. Consoles definitely have a home here too, not only due to the 4K resolution and HDMI 2.1 ports, but also support for black frame insertion at 120Hz. Both the PS5 and Xbox Series X support 120Hz output, giving you the option to get a bit of extra motion clarity on those games running at 60fps constantly. Outside of games, on the desktop, you have the OLED panel to contend with. The risk of burn-in is omnipresent with OLED monitors, especially after significant desktop use. It's not something you really need to worry about with the PG32 UCDM though. As mentioned, you get a three-year warranty with this display that covers burn-in, but more importantly, ASUS includes a pixel cleaning feature with reminders you can set every two, four, or eight hours of use, as well as an auto-dimming feature for static elements like logos and a screensaver. You have a lot of options here to keep the screen looking great, as well as that three-year warranty in your back pocket in case anything goes wrong. Still, this is a gaming monitor, so it's best to use it to play games, not sit on your desktop or watch TV all day. That really shouldn't come as a surprise. On to some conclusions though. Like I mentioned at the top of this video, the big question for the PG32 UCDM is if it can justify a $100 premium over the Alienware 32 QD OLED, and it does. It matches Alienware's monitor both in quality and support, and it goes further with an excellent stand and a world-class set of features. For an extra $100, I would buy the ASUS monitor every time. My only lingering question is if that will be the difference for most buyers. Alienware has a little bit of a head start on the market, and in the past I've seen a lot more Alienware monitors on sale than I've seen ASUS ones. Ultimately, you'll need to make the call depending on pricing, keeping in mind that ASUS comes out slightly ahead with its set of features. But I want to know what you think. Are extra features enough to justify the price premium, or are we all focused on pure image quality? Let me know in the comments below. While you're down there, make sure to leave a like on this video and get subscribed. All right, everyone, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.